Welcome back to the BigML tutorial series. In this video, we'll be digging deeper into a few of the configuration options BigML offers for constructing a supervised model. To start, we'll introduce another supervised learning problem based on a dataset gathered from a peer-to-peer -peer lending website. We'll then see how the one-click model might not be very useful and how we can improve its usefulness by balancing the objective field. Finally, we'll talk about missing data and how to configure your model to leverage it. Our dataset for this tutorial is information on a collection of borrowers gathered from a peer-to-peer -peer lending website. This information relates to their credit usage and employment, and the goal is to predict whether or not they will default on a loan they are given. Training a model on this data would allow someone to identify a small subset of borrowers unlikely to default, so they could invest their money in those loans. Let's train a one-click model on this dataset. As we can see from the tree, the first split selected by the algorithm is whether or not this potential borrower has an annual income of more than about $41,000. For those making less than that, the next question is what percentage of their total available revolving credit are they using? Another way to view the same tree is using the sunburst style visualization that you can reach by using the menu at the top left of the tree. This provides a top-down view of the tree, where the root node is represented by the central circle and nodes further down in the tree view are further from the center in the sunburst view. The arc lengths for each child ring represent the amount of training data contained in that ring. If we mouse over the two arcs closest to the center, we see the same split as we did in the tree view. Following the annual income less than 41,000 path away from the center, we can see that the next set of arcs corresponds to the question about revolving credit usage. If you wish to investigate a particular subset of the training data further, you can click on the child arc corresponding to that subset. This recenters the sunburst on that subset. To move back up a level, just click the center of the sunburst. The buttons at the top of the view allow you to recolor the sunburst by split field, by confidence, or perhaps most usefully, by prediction. This last coloring allows you to immediately see which subsections of the tree are producing predictions of a certain type. You may notice at this point that the sunburst is almost uniformly colored. This is because most people, more than 90%, will pay off a loan they take out. So if the model nearly always predicts that a person will pay off their loan, the model will nearly always be right. Of course, this does not make for a terribly useful model. In the data world, we refer to such datasets as unbalanced. The problem is essentially that we have a class, people who default on their loans, which is rare in the dataset but very important to detect accurately. This is a sort of problem that you may see over and over again in different domains. In medical diagnosis, there are far fewer people who have some disease than those that do not. When detecting credit card fraud, fraudulent transactions are far more rare than legitimate ones, and so on. The remedy for this problem is to explicitly tell the algorithm to give the classes equal weight, rather than using their prevalence in the data to determine their importance. Going back to the dataset, we can open up the Model Configuration panel under the Gears icon. Here, we see all of the configurable options we can set when training a model. There are many options which are all discussed in detail in the dashboard documentation, but we'll go over a few of them here now. To tell the algorithm to give the classes equal weight, open up the Advanced Configuration subpanel and the Weights subpanel beneath that. This panel allows you to specify weights for the classes or individual instances in your data. The higher the weight assigned to a class or instance, the harder the model will try to make sure it predicts that instance or class correctly. You may select a combination of three options to specify the weights. The most fine-grained choice is to use a weight field, in which one of the fields in your data is used to specify a weight for each training instance. The second is objective weights, 
in which you can assign a relative weight to each class of instances in your training data. The last is Balance Objective, which does exactly what we specified earlier. It reweights the classes so that all classes of instances are weighted equally, regardless of how prevalent they are in the data. We'll select this option and retrain the tree. If we return to the sunburst view, we can see now that the tree is much more likely to predict that a borrower will default. Overall, the predictions of this model will be overly cautious and will predict a borrower will default much more often than it actually happens. The trade-off is that when the model predicts that a borrower will not default, it is much more likely to be right than the previous model. For someone looking for a small subset of borrowers that are very unlikely to default, this model is probably more useful. The other option we'll talk about in this video is missing splits. There may be many reasons why a field value is missing for a particular instance in your training data. Maybe each instance is a customer survey and the customer forgot to fill out some fields. Maybe each instance is a medical patient and the doctor decided that some test was not necessary. In some cases, if the value for a field is missing, it may be useful information. If a doctor decides not to give a patient a certain test, for example, the patient is probably less likely to have a disease for which that test is relevant. This isn't always true of missing data. Sometimes the data is missing for a reason that isn't important to the objective value, such as a database error or a corrupt data file. But in cases where missing values have meaning, it is useful to train models able to capture that information. In the employment length column in our lending dataset, we have a situation where the missing data is probably relevant information. For this field, about 4% of the instances in the dataset are missing this value. One can imagine that if people neglect to specify the length of their employment, they are likely to be unemployed, which is important to determining whether or not they will default on a loan. By going back to the Model Configuration panel, we can capture this information by opening the Advanced Configuration and Tree subpanels. Clicking on the Missing Splits icon will allow the tree to use missing values as it does all other values. When we create a model with this option selected, we see at least one place in the resulting tree where this information is used. Borrowers with more than 10 years employment in their current job are predicted to avoid default with high confidence. Borrows with less than that, or a missing value for employment length, get a lower confidence prediction. To review, we discussed in this video another supervised learning problem where we learned to predict whether or not a borrower would default on a loan they were given. After creating the one-click model, we saw that the model was too eager to predict the majority class, and so we fixed this problem by configuring the model to balance the weights of the objective classes. Finally, we saw that some fields had missing data that might be useful, and so we configured our model to use missing splits to capture that data.